Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 88. I'm Mike Sor down here in Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, and we got a packed show lined up for you this week. Uh, with me, as always, from the Cotton Factory. We can yes. say that. You're at the Cotton Factory. It's yeah, there. You can say it's the Cotton Factory. It is. Rob yeah. De La Creta, how you doing this week, sir? Do you have any scotch? Uh, we have some vodka. I could really use scotch. Really? I'm about there. Yeah, one of those weeks. I, it's <laughs> it's one of those months. Mm-hmm. One of those quarters. One of those. It's a two month period, really. Okay. February and March, bad. Okay. Busy bad. I think I'm gonna bring in. It's bad enough that I could bring in a bottle of scotch and put it on my desk, and nobody would blink. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Also with us from the Wrestling Mayhem Show, as well as MonsterHaiku.org, Will Rutherford. Huh. It's weird. Hello, it's- gorgeous. <laughs> I am uh, I am here, Sorg. We've known each other for how many years, and you still can't pronounce my last name? No, because I call you LB. <laughs> I, I, I don't even call you your Rutherford. Yes. Rutherford. Ruth- Ruth- Rutherford. Rutherford. That's okay. Uh, it doesn't matter because it's a terrible last name, but I am here uh, to represent monsterhaiku.org uh, but I'm not the only one no you're not go ahead and swing oh. it to them. go ahead and introduce your compatriots here um, uh, they're live in the Mayhem Studios uh, Josh and Rachel Sager hello the, uh, uh, hi guys hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> we actually accidentally turned on Rutherford Street to get here yes it's right behind yeah. the studio <laughs> yeah fate it's all fated it is Excellent. So you're joining us uh, first time in studio for this show, but you've been here before. No, I've been in. No, I've been oh, in the show yeah. before. Yeah. No, I've been here before. You, you, you haven't been. Have you been here though? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. For yeah. this show. Yeah, he no, was in there the for the no. other show. It's no, for the other no. show, freelance for real. You haven't been no, here. He was. Fly. He's you, been on Awesome Cast. Yeah, he has. It's. It was like but, yeah. a month and a half ago. Yeah, yeah but yeah. that was in Skype. Yeah, that was Skype. No, he no. was here. He here. was physically was in the studio. Here, yeah. here. Oh, I'm so confused. I'm with Sorg. <laughs> I don't believe it ever happened. Yeah, he was there. It was episode 86. Oh, was it? No, episode 86 was two weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Live. Time, time. Well, we're going to be talking about Monster Haiku here a bit, but first we're going to check in training for Chachi Plays this weekend. Oh, is God. Chachi. What are you playing there? You switched up your games. It's a San Francisco San Francisco Rush, Rush for the yeah. N64. Yes. <laughs> so if you hear any, any music in the background, I'm not sure if it's coming through there. Uh, but that's <laughs> there you go. So I can drive a, a V-dub van. <laughs> drive a V-dub. ChachiPlays.com. Extreme. Excellent. Yes, we hit three thousand dollars today. Yes, we did. Which Congrats! You made your goal. Yeah. Yeah. And that all is going on this weekend. Uh, you I can am live stream seven to seven p.m. Yes, Friday and Saturday. <laughs> yes, at Tunesium. Yes, on Liberty Avenue. It's the nine hundred block. I oh shit. <laughs> Hey, uh, hey! It was hey, the hey, 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 uh, hey, nine hundred hey. block of Liberty Avenue. His, his filter is off. Pittsburgh. His filter is off when he's uh. <laughs> he's playing video games apparently so uh let's go yeah. to you guys so monster haiku tell us what's going on with it so far all right um well this is a a project that's been about three years in the making uh, mm-hmm. we're really proud of it um we are self-publishing an illustration and haiku book along with rachel's amazing illustrations and will's fabulous haiku poetry we put them together in a collection uh, that you can purchase and 100% of all the profits go to the March of Dimes. So we have this book um, available for pre-order, as well as a couple of posters, um, some greeting cards, and some original artwork and original haiku for sale. So this is all for sale from February 1st until March 3rd, which is my birthday, by the way. And after that, uh, we shut the store down and we donate all the proceeds. And uh, we have a closing reception at Wildcard in Pittsburgh, which is an amazing store if you guys haven't gone. Uh, that's going to be Friday the 13th in April. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> now, uh, Rachel and Will, how, how did you guys uh, first get together uh, you know, with your, with your talents? Uh, Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the great binder. Um, well, in 2009, I started um, 52 Ills which was an illustration blog that did one. Um, I did one illustration per week for a year. Um, and I made it, I made it to 2010 with 52 whole illustrations. And I think it was 
PodCamp 2010. Well, I think that's that right. That sounds that sounds about right. Yeah. yeah, and uh and he and I were chatting at the bar. So true, alcohol was totally involved. Um and he um well, I'll let you tell that part. How's that? I I uh I had the idea because I had been writing haiku on thoughtfulriot.com for <laughs> A number of years, I don't even know how many, and um, I, uh, I was always pairing it with images, which um, I felt got a better response. So it just seemed um, seemed logical to ask Rachel if I could uh, use her illustrations on my blog, and um, it uh, it went well. And we, uh, I think it was at that point, we talked about the possibility of um, just like a gallery show or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was our original thought. And then, um, after you did the haiku, I was like, Hey, haiku, that those are words and books have words. So yeah. let's, uh, <laughs> that means we have content. So maybe, um, so we started thinking about putting it all in a book. Excellent. So, so it's completely something that, that started off digitally. Like, I mean, is it, is this something that was, uh, maybe inspired by what we're seeing with that Chachi? checking on him uh what we've seen of course like there's the uh the bleep my dad says and uh you know other other kind of like tumble blogs and twitters and stuff have, have inspired books was this going along those kinds of lines um, I, think so. I don't there's know ours. i mean i i have i think it's our desire just to kind of grow as creative professionals mm -hmm. um into trying some things that we've never really done before mm -hmm. and we've been talking about doing something and i think getting behind the March of Dimes allowed us to put our fears aside and just go for it and make it happen. Yeah. And the, and the book, I think part of the inspiration, um, at least to me as an illustrator is, and, and I think Will might agree with this as a writer, you want to have a book, like that's like dream number one, you want to publish something. And, and it, the idea of having a book and being able to go to a library somewhere and be like, Oh, I'd like to check this out. It's by me is like a really <laughs> wonderful, charming um, idea. I just bought it's, a uh, block should. of ISBN numbers the other night. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. They, ISBNs are... Barcode. They're identifiers yeah. for mm -hmm. books. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, that's the real exciting. deal. That, so. that means you're official. Yeah. Uh, well, I we have to submit the paperwork, but as soon okay. as it's submitted, it's it, yeah. It, that and then that still seems you know as much as we're doing digital stuff, it really still feels like um, like you know we did a CD and 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 we got that UPC code, and that's when you thought you felt you're official. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it really true. does. Like it, it, that's still like the the mark. There's actually some uh, products, some legit products. I'm trying to put out. Because I would sell a legitimate products. Um, <laughs> some legit products I'm trying to put on Amazon. I was, I was trying. I was investigating the Amazon sellers program, and they still require that UPC. So it really is just a mark of, you know, this is a real thing that I can sell. You know, so and, and you know that maybe maybe one day we'll we'll see the book on there. But um, but but you know, with all this going on, is that do you think that's changing, or are we still going to be rooted in this, or is it just our generation that's grown up with? physical products with like books and CDs, you think? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Um, a cool. lot of my coworkers, they, they all have children and they're all iPads, like crazy iPad stuff all the time. That's all the kids are on, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't know. I don't know if they're going to, maybe books will be vintage whenever they're in high school. I don't know. <laughs> it's like vinyl for us now. Yeah. Oh, I love vinyl. Love <laughs> there you it. go. There you go. But it is interesting, though, because when we were reading the information about an ISBN number, you if you intend if you have a book and you intend to publish it digitally and physically, um, you actually need two different numbers two. for that. Really? Yeah. So for every different version, like Kindle and um, uh, there's like an EPUB and a Mobi and all that, like, wow, <laughs> as opposed to I think a UPC, UPC covers for music. Yeah, Anything it's, it's it. for cataloging purposes yeah. is what it says. Or maybe it's a scam. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'd like to I'd like to take this uh, opportunity to point out. Um, you see how Josh and Rachel are talking about ISBN numbers and things like that, and how they just went out and did that. Um, I'd like to take this moment to point out that they have done so much work on getting this book uh, done and published and laid out and all the other products and the printing and everything. And I mean, I, I wrote some stuff and I, Josh and Rachel have done the really, really <laughs> sticky, gross, hard stuff. 
uh, in this book. I mean, it's been some work, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> but crazy. it couldn't be Monster Haiku without Haiku Absolutely. either. So. I, I, well, I, I appreciate that, but I, I would be totally lost in filling out government paperwork to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for ISBN numbers. Uh, that's why I have a Josh. I'm not doing any of you that. You know what, though? You have that with any project you do. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. Any project. Like, <laughs> uh, for Chachi Plays, I constantly refer to it as we did this. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm talking about the Sorgs. And I'm constantly corrected with, no, you to which I immediately recorrect. It's an <laughs> argument that will not stop. <laughs> I love so. I love Chachi chiming in. Just the image of he's he's giving this very very thoughtful uh, thoughtful input while just playing a racing game, <laughs> 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 not even looking at the camera. No, doesn't even care. Horribly, by the way, I'm playing this game <laughs> horribly. Well, that's been one of the barriers as to why it's taken so long for this to come together. I, I, I remember Rachel vividly, and this is a direct quote. She said, I don't want to do any of that stuff. I just want to make art and sell it and give it to people. Yeah. You know, like give money to people. And mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that became my goal is to try to figure out and a and way to that And most artists are that way, really. They're just like, I just want to yeah. make art and people see it. Yeah. Well, and, and, and that's also, you know, when people ask us about Monster Haiku, if I have to do the pitch, it's awful. It's terrible. And you're like, oh, my gosh, please stop. But that's why I always defer to Josh, because you sound intelligent about it. I'm like, I need some monsters. And Everybody needs an agent. That's why, <laughs> that's, why most, that's why most authors have publishers. That's right. <laughs> and stuff like that. That's right. I have been your publicist. You have been, for sure. I appreciate that. I'll give you a raise. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so I mean, you know, uh, you, now now you know, a touch of a touch base. Something that we talked on a little bit over on freelance for real uh, way back. I think it was like episode eight when we did that. Um, it, it, now this is something that was spun out out of your mm-hmm. LLC, correct? Yep. Yeah. Uh, you want to is... give a little background on that for those maybe who haven't checked out that episode? Sure. Um, Ray, uh, I have a company. Um, it's called Second Block Studio. It's an LLC, and I started it um, as a I don't know. An outreach, uh, or or maybe as a graduation, I think is maybe a, a better word of doing freelance. And I wanted to be a little bit more legit about it. I wanted to um, be covered in case somebody sued me for whatever. And so I, I lawyered up and filled out some paperwork and started this business. And I primarily have been doing a lot of just like general web design and and um, consultancies and stuff like that. But um, <clears throat> it was always the goal to make creative goods and just try it out just to see if anybody would be interested in purchasing them. And get back to the chat room. Uh, I, I think from what we were talking about before, uh, about the, the artist <laughs> thing, uh, song screwdriver says that's the difference between creation and manifestation. Mm. So there you go. That's but, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and it's been a few more months down the line and it, everything's been going good with that then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's going really well actually like way better than we ever intended um Mm -hmm. so well in fact that i think that we're gonna continue this forward and um we have some other product ideas that that we're currently building that we're going to release um later on the in the year and i'm really really excited about that so i don't know i don't know if it'll ever become a full-time gig but um it's definitely something much more rewarding than making a crappy website for a client that you don't care about and then nobody's going to see so this is really the first kind of public facing thing people are going to see from this this, yes. this union this yeah. this reunion of youtube <laughs> as a company mm-hmm. so excellent excellent uh now i know you're you guys are uh using the social media a good bit you're on facebook you're on google plus can you tell us how you're implementing that a good bit um well this is actually a pretty funny story <laughs> um i uh, i was against using facebook actually for mm-hmm. this project because it was one more thing to manage but um i got um a press release from Missy Sorg in my inbox one day uh, about this event called Chachi Plays. And <laughs> on there, one of the things said, uh, you can check us out on Facebook. And so Rachel's like, do you think we should have a Facebook page? And I'm like, ah, it's just one more thing to manage. I just, I don't, uh, okay, let, let's just do it. So it was a very last minute thing. And I am so glad that we did because mm-hmm. it helped us build momentum. I had been reading a lot about successful product launches, and one of the things that they talk about is building momentum 
into the product launch. Mm -hmm. So we, we had a strategy 13 days out was to make the announcement. And then we didn't want to like bombard everyone with like, you know, please check this out. So instead we released a new illustration and a new piece of artwork every single day leading up into the announcement. And that worked out really well. Inside of 13 days, we ramped up on the day we launched, we had a hundred likes. And uh, I think that's pretty awesome because mm -hmm. I didn't think mm -hmm. that like 20 people would like it. Yeah. And it, it's definitely translated into sales. So I'm, I'm really, really excited about it's definitely, that. It's definitely where the people are. Like I, I'm finding that with one of my clients. I, I didn't think Facebook was the place to go, but there, there's more people, re there, people are generally already there. Yeah, and, and it's it's it feels like a lower barrier for the general populace than Twitter. Yeah, and we we really thought Twitter like was going to be. Oh on. yeah, we did, but uh, our target audience is kind of mommies, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, yeah. because of the w who we're benefiting here, and uh, we have a Google Plus, and uh, there's like four people that know about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's up, and we have it's, all our stuff there. It's so hard to get yeah, four. See. Yeah, I, and I'm you're one of, one of I'm them. I'm in there. Yeah. I'm in there. There you go. Um, it, it's so hard to get people to find it, is what I'm finding. Yeah. Uh, like it's great, it's there, but no, if nobody's looking for it, what are you going to do? Yeah, that, that's... I can share it to my people, but that's it. Yeah. You know, I, and I think the people are still trying to figure out the strategies there. And Twitter's so. been helping out uh, a lot too, but Facebook has been our our go to. Yeah. Um, distribution center of information if you will yeah and, and i have to say also that um josh was a very big um supporter of doing a pre-launch of doing a leading up to it um mm -hmm. kind of and and in this instance i think that was that was really I an ideal situation and i was like no no one's gonna care if you say oh we're gonna start doing this thing in two weeks but um but the facebook i mean being on facebook and the hype that built in in that two week period was super duper important it was crazy like i it was very hard to stay focused throughout the nine to five situation. Oh, I was useless <laughs> in my day job. How many likes do we have? How many likes do we have? Uh, from the chat room, Miss Bossy Pants uh, says she'd like to see a partnership between Monster Haiku and Cotton Factory. Cute monsters on T-shirts, please. <laughs> that can happen. Uh, I, would, I would love that. I would love that too. <laughs> if I could have a monster on something that feels as good as this shirt here. <laughs> oh my god. You are doing, uh, but you are doing more than. Uh, books here you're selling yes. yeah we um are selling posters that are being printed through commonwealth Pro commonwealth press mm -hmm. down the south side and um, we're also selling some greeting cards and um some original there's there it is right there some original um watercolor and haiku yeah. and so we've sold one of the four that we're going to release and we, re we release a new piece of artwork every week okay yeah and um and those are originals so yeah, you get originals. it matted framed and it's it's that painting, no one else will have that. So, excellent, excellent. So, a little bit of rarity yep. adding to it. That's yeah, yeah, that's hoping. Yeah, excellent. And uh, we have a couple more things up our sleeve uh, coming out soon. Some that we can talk about, and some that we can't talk about just yet. But w one that I'm really excited about is uh, here. There's a holiday coming up. Ah, and yes. <laughs> why not Monster Valentine's? That's right. So those will be uh, coming out uh, within another day or two. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. totally for free, and you can pass them around to your sweetie. Yes, mm -hmm. if you have kids, print them out. Make your kids take them to, to school, <laughs> please. They're all just they're all G, like rated G. We did that on purpose, though. So. Yeah, just tell everybody where you got them. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Any other hurdles that you guys came across in putting this together? Oh, lots, tons. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Like every day, yeah, yeah. Um, so one of the things I wanted to do is make sure that it was responsive, uh, that it worked on as many different things as I could test against. And, um, I think we did a pretty good job of that, especially because one of my coworkers bought a book and, um, she bought it on her phone, like the, the morning that it came out. So mm. I was really pleased about that. And our mobile stats are, are much higher than I thought they would be. Um, and so is internet Explorer eight. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, mommy's, yeah, I guess yeah, what the um, heck? Uh, th we've had hurdles like with tax stuff. So uh, we had to file and get a tax ID and make sure that that was all in a line. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we had a couple <clears throat> questionable copyright oh, issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm a I am anal about stuff. <laughs> and so there were a couple spreads in the book that I thought could potentially cause a problem. So I ran them uh, by my lawyer and talked to an IP specialist, uh, intellectual property specialist. And we were able to talk through stuff and it was awesome. Like it was just, it was amazing. Um, 
And it was it was cool the way that they defined it too. He was like, "Well, you could, but it's this level of risk." Yeah, instead like, of yes or no or right or wrong, it was like this amount of risk. Yes. So it's a very yes but kind of situation. Yeah, yeah, very much so. <laughs> and so. in the question of the one, he was nerding out about it. He's like, "Huh, that's actually kind of crazy." <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the level of risk would be low, but why don't I look into it? Um, it would cost about this amount of money, and I can certify this like sheet of paper for you that if something were to happen, it doesn't 100% protect you, but it's like a good first line of defense. Yeah. And so I'm like, I didn't even know stuff like that existed. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby of J-Town's uh, uh, calling for Monster President's Day. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, Monster President's Day. I think oh we God. can do that. I, we I, can do that. Oh my gosh, a monster Abraham Lincoln? I think I can do that. Monster Ham Lincoln? <laughs> that sounds, <laughs> monster Ham Lincoln, that's yeah. right. I yeah, that's it. happening. Love it. Excellent, excellent. What, and, and it's been such a pleasure to work with both Will and Rachel. Like, mm -hmm. I, I thought it was going to be tough working on a serious project with my wife, but it has been nothing but amazing. That's true. That's not awesome. even face. Like we yeah. really, like, we're like, wow, we're having a really good time. Yeah, yeah we, we talked about that before because it, it, that'd be a worry going into like the the joint thing. Like it, it, most most couples can't get along that that well. We we let, have our let, discussions. Let, 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 <laughs> yes, we do. Let alone discussions. for business for for, your, <laughs> for getting by. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and there have been some instances where we're um, where I'll say one thing and Josh says another, and one of us is like, okay. I'm really going to fight for this. Are you willing to engage in this fashion? <laughs> and if, you know, usually one of us is like, you know what, just to be that much to me. I'm, I'm good. I'm all right. Yeah, we had a pretty passionate discussion about rollovers one day. We and did. Then, and then we went in a completely we different did. direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So uh, what about you? What, 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 how are you uh, faring with this, uh, with, with this release here? I've had absolutely none of that. It's been nothing but pure pleasure working with uh, with both of the Sagers. So uh, we uh, we sat down the other day. We did some video, some audio, some some B roll, things like that. And they um, they keep me updated whenever we sell a book. Um, I find out uh, anytime they need something, they tell me, and I give it to them, and vice versa. And it's it's nice. It's it's fantastic. It's way easier than working with any single person I work with in real life. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, excellent. And and Will, I have to say, um, you know, I'll text him at nine thirty and be like, "Hey, here's a picture of a painting. We need a haiku like now. Can you just hook that up?" And you know, his his response time is really awesome for our, you know, whims. <laughs> our we need a haiku, buddy. We that, need to produce. She's not exaggerating either. It was like nine thirty, and I was sitting and playing Call of Duty with everybody, <laughs> and I get this text of the picture saying. Uh, uh, look at this person. We need a haiku. And um, I think in between games, I was able to uh, cook something up. Yeah. So in a 60 second time, <laughs> <laughs> not in between help. one game, in between a, a, a number of games. But um, uh, that does speak to the um, the how good Rachel's artwork is that I can I can look at an image like that and uh, go from. Uh, concept stage to uh, finished product that quickly and that easily. Mm -hmm. It's that it's that um, I guess inspiring. So excellent, excellent. So um, excellent. So uh, monsterhaiku.org. dot org. Mm -hmm. I keep saying dot com. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that, that's actually somebody different. Yeah, yeah. And I'm closing <laughs> in. Don't I'm closing on in his SEO. Like I am really close. <laughs> 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 excellent excellent so um let's get into some of the stories for the week here uh first you know let's go and touch on this because i know josh you we've had some discussions about ibooks in the mm -hmm. last few weeks and uh just these the last couple days they actually finally changed the eula that everybody had a problem with <laughs> yeah. uh now now you, you've been playing with it for some things sure have. uh before that uh i have i think i even have one right here as soon as um so we're we were considering releasing this as a digital book, and um, in the research that we were looking into, InDesign saves that as an EPUB file. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, that's awesome! So I go and we do it, and it's not awesome. <laughs> it's still <ugly>. no, <laughs> it's super no. Ugly. Uh, if, if you're doing a text-based book, it would work out pretty good, but yeah. images are a second-class citizen, and this is a full... Which, ki Kindle is the same, similar yeah. issue, I understand. Uh, I, do, I can't comment on that. I don't know. Uh, I, from what I've seen, it, it's been an issue from other other authors. But, like, going from not being able to do it to being able to do it is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was talking to a buddy of mine who um, happens to work at a, a really big electronic place retailer that 
makes awesome stuff. And he's like, I'll tell you more about it tomorrow. And then all of a sudden, iBook Author came out. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I downloaded it and fired it up. And it is amazing. It is totally easy to use. And uh, just like Keynote, like awesome, awesome, awesome. I can't speak highly enough about it except their end user license agreement was really insane on the day that it came out. It read as if they owned everything that you created, all forms, all um, versions. Like if you made a PDF out of it, like that's the way that it read it. We mm -hmm. own all of it. Mm -hmm. And that was a little scary. For and it, it, it sounded like if you gave it away for free, you were in the clear. No. Yeah. You can give like it, that, give that it away for fine. free. Yeah. So. You cannot, you cannot sell it or, show it to your mother or like <laughs> it was really crazy and so that they clarified what that meant mm -hmm. um i think i have a version on here that we were messing around with oh no i think i think we could uh, it says here and yeah, as here far as the eula change uh it, it says if you want it says important note in the in the new eula if you want to charge a fee uh for a work that includes files in the .ibooks format generated using iBooks author, you may only sell or distribute the, book, the work through Apple, and such distribution will be uh, subject to the agreement with Apple. It does not apply to content of such works when distributed in a form that does not include the files in the iBooks format. Yes. So you're open to, like, does and does this even put out to anything other than iBooks? Um, I think that you could take the information and, and extract a PDF out of it. Okay. Here, here it is right here. Woo. I don't know if I can do this backwards like this, but um, it was really easy to set up and it looked really good. This looks terrible on screen. Mm -hmm. But what was well, a lot nicer th this way than uh, with the EPUB is that the EPUB wraps all this white and it was separating our spreads. So it was like... It had built-in margins. Yeah, it had built-in margins and I'm all sure kinds of like, scalar. yeah. Um, so it, yeah, yeah, there you go. It's, it's awesome. So this is just a test. It only has two spreads in there, mm -hmm. um, with some copy from the very first page. And, th and this looks like some of the, the children's books I've seen like, just on, like on, on a nook. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so, I mean, it looks on par with that. The colors are, are look amazing on here. Of course. Uh, <laughs> the rabbit's hilarious. Yeah, but the only thing that's yeah, weird is looks, like when you great. when you turn it, mm -hmm. it gets in this weird sort of like long format, um, mm -hmm. and things start to disappear. But um, after some investigation, you can totally turn all that off. Okay, like you you can make it so that it's landscape only. So it it would be stuck. Okay, so it would be. Yeah. Oh, it wouldn't turn at all. You no, mean? it would it would stay landscape. Okay, It'd be fixed. Well, that's that's good, especially if, if you have a specific format for something like that. So like so, this is something. Like I said, I've been investigating this for a magazine that's very uh, image based, and and I, I couldn't see the floating text thing working with it. So if I set something up, I could lock it into a you know, right. Oh yeah. Like it's, a magazine format. It's it would awesome. Be, it would be good to go. I don't have to worry about the flow thing or anything. like. No, that. It, it's just like using keynote only mm -hmm. it kicks out this, um, <clears throat> iBook file format and, and to get it to, to get it on here. Like I've been doing, um, uh, iOS development recently and it was been a, a big pain in the butt just to get that going. Mm -hmm. But to get this going is so easy. You just plug it right in and there's a, like an iPad picture that says like preview <laughs> and you just click on it. It's like, I'm on there. Mm -hmm. And it just opens right up. It's awesome. And does it do for uh, iPhone as well? I don't know. I think I think it's it, only for this guy. It's mostly aimed for iPad right now. I, I I don't know. I haven't I haven't even considered it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's supposed to be it, the software is supposed to be for textbooks, as you see with the tutorial stuff they have in there already. Uh, so I think they are mostly aiming an iPad for that. But I did find out uh, as going through here that um, the iBook application takes PDFs. Okay. And so, like, we have this newsstand here that has all of our PDFs. And so we, when we were meeting with um, Rebecca at Wildcard and some of the other vendors and we're, like, showing off our idea because it's not in print right now, um, this has been extremely helpful to show them what it's going to look like and how it's going to react and, and, and everything. Um, and it's just a PDF inside of, inside of this iBook or uh, inside of uh, the iBook app or whatever. Mm -hmm. You just <clears throat> drag and drop it on. It's awesome. So you see exactly what it looks like. That's amazing. Yep. It's awesome. The colors are not exactly right, but mm -hmm. um, it's okay. Is there, is there a process you can apply to that? Oh, yeah. You can, like, <clears throat> probably 
change the the colors either in the PDF or um, before you export, and you could optimize it for this device. But this particular PDF that's on here is optimized for print. Excellent, excellent. So um, that really, I like that. It really open it really opens that up because I mean, really, iBooks was never a consideration until until something like this. So for I think a lot of people on, on, on this level. You know, like yeah, trying, trying to push something out like this. I, I guess like the Kindle is pretty cool. Like I dig mm -hmm. that, but mm -hmm. the the graphics are atrocious. Mm -hmm. But everyone says how good the type looks, and it does. The type looks amazing. That's on for a Kindle. books. It, it, it's and, great for books. Yeah, but you want to open that up to a, a eighty dollar you know e ink Kindle. It's just going to look. It's going to thrash everything. So, um, so it's really limited. It, it's it, and I, I don't think you can lock it down to just like the color or anything. And and the great thing about the iBook author is that you can make stuff interactive and you don't have to be a programmer or anything. Like at mm -hmm. all it's like mm -hmm. I said, it's just like running keynote. And so anybody can come in and make something that could be like an interactive children's book. By the way, also from the chat room, uh, Zombie Washington. Nice. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I've done zombies, so I can I can do a zombie Washington. His wooden teeth falling out. That that was actually and <laughs> That's what got this project started because in her 52 ills, somebody was stealing the illustrations and printing them on T-shirts. And so we were like, I wonder if we can do something with this and maybe we could do something for good. And that's sort of that was the inspiration. There you go. Pir piracy kind of inspires. Uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yay. There you go. It was like you know, not to uh, not to print, print my own stuff or anything, but the Cotton Factory does have a zombie Lincoln T-shirt. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> due, due diligence for your company there, Rob. Mm. Excellent, excellent. How you doing over there, Chachi? I'm good. You good? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so good. I can't. <laughs> what are you doing? Right now. How many games are you playing at one time? Two. That's crazy. What are you playing on the iPad? I'm checking oh. out the uh, the Sims free play. Oh, okay. That you installed. <laughs> yeah, I might be able to actually do both at the same time. Play Sims and Rush at the same time. Yeah, he, so. He's 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 laying it on uh, uh, for for this weekend. Excellent. All right, some other stuff in here. Um, this is interesting. Well, first, I hey, I know Rob, you like your Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> well, they they just released the first uh, original content <sighs> for Netflix. This yeah, yeah. I saw. I actually, you know, I, I went into Netflix to find mm -hmm. some mind numbing content that they're so good at serving up. And, uh, and I saw, I, there was a little thing that said, Hey, we're going to have our own series and put in your email and we'll let you know when it starts. And I got my email the other day that they started it. Lily hammer, which it's not, um, I don't think it was developed for Netflix. I think it's from <laughs> Scandin Sweden or something. I have no idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm trying to find it. It, it's, it stars a uh, Sopranos veteran. Uh, so there is that. And actually, here's a trailer for it. I Which one? I can't remember the concept for this because I remember I saw it about a month ago. And I've not been able to check this out yet. Uh, but there it is. Um, so it, and it looks, I mean, it's it's a, you know, fully produced thing. It looks on par with anything we see on TV. And of course, House of Cards, the big Kevin Spacey thing, I think is due next year. So... Um, and I think this is the month that we lose stars, right? So, probably, um, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. I, 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 I think this, this is, uh, you're going to see Netflix just looking like stars or HBO here in the next few years. Yeah, yeah we've so, talked plenty just, about just how another the, option like that, you know? The secret to breaking down this whole wall problem between cable television and things like Netflix and Hulu is when the publishers skip. The or like when the the content producers skip that middleman that's trying to uh, syndicate all these shows to uh, all of the television networks because that is such an incredibly large incurred expense as far as a lack of profit that gets returned. Whereas when you take this and you take it directly to an online publisher like Netflix, mm -hmm. there's a much better return. It's much easier for the people who like your stuff to engage in your content, and everybody wins. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been, I've even been enjoying a lot of stuff that's been uh, Hulu exclusive lately. Um, mostly British stuff, uh, but they, they've had some other stuff like the booth at the end was, has been on there, which I think was a Canadian series. Uh, that's really good, really short, but really, really interesting. Um, but it's stuff that you don't think 
would survive if you saw it on like you know sci-fi or, or or one of those channels especially with all the british stuff sure i mean it's it's, it's certainly not... a cultivated audience the oh, difference yeah. between cable television and netflix is that cable television like the vast majority of cable television is people who live in the suburbs and people who i mean we can all generally agree that 90 percent of what's on cable television is awful mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. really terrible mm -hmm. um and so if you have something that's like a niche show that a lot of people like for instance if you like louis ck you love louis louis is hilarious but it, that's not going to fly on national television because the ratings are going to be poor because it's a niche show mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah definitely definitely it, it cuts out the middleman it's great to see and uh hopefully a lot more of this stuff kind of survives here mm -hmm. so what'd you send me here uh oh oh did you send the, the lincoln link here to the shirt yes <laughs> there he is oh, <laughs> for nice. you guys on video <laughs> so there you go cottonfactory.com sorry <laughs> that's all right that's all right we give free plugs all the time yeah. um what else is going on here so two cows which i know you're a fan of rob launches a new service a new cell phone service called ting it's a contract free mobile service on sprint's network and a lot of people are kind of getting excited about this uh it's very it, it's it's bring your bring your own phone for the most part, uh, there, there are six smartphones available from them. Uh, but, of course, you got to get something. I, I, I don't know. They said, like, you can't, like, just get a Sprint phone and bring it to the service. It has to be unlocked if you were to bring your own phone. Um, but it's very um, um, pay-as-you-go. Uh, as you see here, you can, you can pick your, your text and your minutes and your uh, megabytes out of here. Uh, so for people that you know, like we, we just saw the messaging go unlimited only on, on AT&T, for instance. You know, now that everybody's using iMessage, not using text messaging. Um, this seems like a, a pretty decent alternative for, for people like that that maybe don't use as many minutes because they're using data all the time. Or, uh, or, or you know, the same with text messages or anything like that. There's, there are two, three, four, five different levels of text data and minutes on this. So what do you guys think of this? You think this is a, an option for you think for a lot of people that don't want the, the higher bills and the contracts? Rob? Sorry, I spaced out. <laughs> <laughs> What's the price point? Um, it looks like it starts out like minutes starts out like 100 minutes for three dollars. Oh, wow. Okay. And it goes from there. And here's I don't know if you can read that chart over there. I'll try to bring it up a little bit here. But I mean, it, it goes from like three dollars to fifty-two minutes just for picking up the minutes, and yeah. three to fourteen dollars for the text messaging, three to sixty dollars uh, for you know one hundred megabytes to three gigabytes. You know, it, it, it's not if you if you're using the heck out of your unlimited plan on your AT&T grandfather thing, this probably isn't for you. But if you're within the bounds, you know, of like I'm only using you know five hundred megabytes to check email, this is this is a pretty decent option, I think. Yeah. How does this, does anybody know how this differs from something like a cricket pay as you go or something like that that really, like the system is built around the idea of not having a contract? Oh, cricket, cricket is uh, prepaid, but it's very, um, like, if you want data, I, I don't think it has many, as many options. Like, you can't go this low with a cricket. Like, maybe the cheapest you're going to get is 30 or $40. Maybe $40. And what, what, are their, uh, what are the fees on this if you go over? Um, I think your it, life. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're pretty uh, comparable. Whenever you exceed your voice data or allotment, you'll just be bumped into the next tier and then oh. reimbursed uh, for your unused portion. So it actually that's is ridiculous. adjusting for what you're actually using. Wow, that's really that's, nice. So, yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting there. I, you know, we have like a seven, 700 minute plan with all the rollover minutes for five people. And sometimes that goes over in the rollover. Sometimes that goes under. But sometimes, some months, like I looked at it this month, we used maybe 100 minutes that weren't like night and weekend or something like that. I mean, granted, I don't see night and weekends or anything like that on this or mobile to mobile or all those other, you know, workarounds there. But it doesn't feel like you're always trying to, like, cover the plan that is like, at least I will never reach this point when you're when you're selecting a cell oh, phone. No, I'm plan. really is lazy. That, is that, is that I'm really lazy with that sort of stuff. I have okay. never checked my stuff ever. Mm -hmm. Not once. But what, what, what the plan you picked? Are you uh, are you trying to lock for this is the most that I will probably use? I have an original <laughs> iPhone <laughs> with the original contract, <laughs> which 
will be turning four years old in, in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so I don't know. Like I just, it, it's always the same amount every month. Mm-hmm. So it never really. And you changes. don't use it enough to, to, that you've ever gone over. No, I did lessen my text messages. Like I had unlimited, and um, I you can't even that do down. that anymore. Um, it's unlimited or bust anymore. Oh really? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Uh, that's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i think like i'm allowed i don't know like 200 text messages now or something like that you don't I, use it that much no, so not that much you're twittering more than anything right yeah exactly yeah yeah and, and, and there's so many alternatives like google voice like uh you know with the the iMessage you know on the iphone um i don't know if you have that on that no i can't phone, i cannot I think i think I'm, <clears throat> i have one of those and I if think you it'll text be... me an image i can't see it oh really <laughs> yeah <laughs> you have copy and paste on that thing yeah yes I do. <laughs> no folders was that 3.0 no it's, it's 3. like six something uh-huh and that's like i i can't get apps no you, you you can't you can't max it out <laughs> i think no. i tried updating pandora on ours because that's what we used for the uh the iPod player for the cafe was the old Edge iPhone, which when somebody broke in, they stole bacon, they stole quarters, they didn't steal the iPhone. Oh, that's kind know, of insulting, isn't it? I know, right? Bacon? They left it. It was sitting there on the base station, out in the middle of the the counter. Didn't steal the iPhone. Didn't even mistake it for an iPod Touch or anything like that and just take it. They wanted bacon and quarters. Bacon <laughs> and quarters. There you go. Sounds like he had a party to get to. <laughs> breakfast and laundry. Woo! <laughs> breakfast and laundry. <laughs> That's an amazing blog. We are actually broken into by a raccoon. <laughs> yeah. The raccoon has no interest in, a, in an iPhone, apparently. Those are the thumbs. I don't think they work. Um... <laughs> So uh, this kind of leads in because Two Cows has a little bit of a relation to something that uh, you're interested in, Rob, right? Yeah, they run Hover, which as far as I'm concerned is the best uh, domain registrar you can go with. Just because they're they, – you call them and they pick up the phone. How about that? <laughs> like that alone is amazing what? to me. Absolutely incredible. But um, Two Cows – a lot of us remember Two Cows from like back in the – I don't know how old they are, like probably 93 – I remember, they, but, weren't, weren't they the old download? Uh, somebody said that they were the yeah. old download.com or something. That's where you'll Yeah, they were files. the old download.com type place where you're like, oh, I want to pick up some sweet shareware. You would go to twocows.com <laughs> and all the software was rated by the amount of cows it had. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, That's what I they did. Get, and then they, they, the they latest, started opening uh, these little tiny niche business models like Hover. Like the idea behind Hover is it's real. It's it's the absolute antithesis of everything GoDaddy is. <laughs> So the interface is very simple. There are no ads. It's Man, really easy to figure know, out what you need to do. You know, and when you call their phone number, somebody picks up. There's no hold or anything. Like it rings, like you're calling your mom, <laughs> and somebody <laughs> picks up. You know, you know. I, I, as I said, I haven't really had a problem with GoDaddy. I've kind of put up with their little things. But man, I, between the the this anti sopa thing, and yeah, the sopa. There, I had a bunch and, of domains that I had left on GoDaddy. And mm-hmm. after SOPA, I moved everything over to Hover, and I could not be happier. And, and, and sitting there during the Super Bowl, I was like, man, I really can't put up with this anymore. Yeah, um, I, made a, I made a few Twitter jokes about the <laughs> fact that, like, GoDaddy is based, all of their commercials on TV now are basically, like, Girls Gone Wild commercials. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, that, like, if you want to see the rest of this hot ad for three easy payments of nineteen ninety five, go to our website. And you could see Danica Patrick desperately trying to hold herself together. <laughs> <laughs> I've, never, about right. I've never gone. you never gone and checked it out, the rest no. of the video? No. I no, think, me either. I'm pretty sure I like back in the day I might have gone once when they first did it and then got completely lost in all the marketing on their site and didn't even find it. Yep. Um, so, Although I did go to the OK Go video. So which the, was the, awesome. The, the Chevy one. Yeah. The one where we're like, we have way too many videos, too many commercials. Go to our website instead. Here's a clip from each. <laughs> yeah. Nice bungee jump a car. <laughs> I love OK Go, though. Yeah. 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 That's true. That, that, that's the way you get the geeks in on there. Like, not, Don't just put it on the web. Put OK Go in there because they do fantastic videos. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it was a... I don't know. I don't want to say it was a great uh, uh, Super Bowl for ads for um, for techies. I mean, we, we got excited when there was like I think a Google commercial last year. Uh, GoDaddy's kind of been the go-to one 
because like hey go daddy yay um e-trade and we can all feel great about that e-trade of oh, the baby that's right yeah, there's the baby sure. there's, there's always the baby. a talking baby but i'm, kind of, talking just, baby. Yeah, I'm kind of just used to the baby being there now but yeah. there was this one pretty good commercial this was like the clint eastwood let's go america uh commercial they did the same thing last year is the thing for for geeks did they do this? Did they do this one for for for, for geeks like this though? Wait, it, which which what are you no, talking, I'm talking about? about the, I'm talking about the Best Buy commercial. Oh, I, I didn't see a Best Buy uh, commercial. Yeah, I'm unfamiliar it's just, with it, it was it's very hidden as a Best Buy commercial. It's basically showing like the the founder of Square, Instagram, uh, words with friends. They're on a plane getting told to not use their words with friends on the plane. But let's for, let's jump in here and point out the fact that all of these individuals are smart enough to never shop at Best Buy. Go on. <laughs> 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 that's a good point there that's a good point there um but and oh wait it looks like they have uh further videos with these guys uh that they're linking here on youtube uh and and, and chachi and i were talking about this beforehand and it was like wow it was a really good commercial it made you really proud to be a a geek and 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 for entrepreneurs and everything and then it was best buy mobile mm, that's how they get you that's where they get you and uh, and there's interviews with them, so we get to find out how they got swindled into doing a Best Buy commercial. It's <laughs> yeah. really, I mean, this, oh, like, there's no there's there's no pride in, in entrepreneurships apparently in the tech industry uh, that they went to this. I don't know, but maybe they, you really think they go? No way they use Best Buy. Mobile. No, there's no, no way. I mean, you, Chachi, you you've dealt with Best Buy Mobile and your your stuff, right? No, no, never. You stay stay <laughs> the hell. <laughs> no, nobody wants to do that. <laughs> you realize how long it's been since I've stepped into a Best Buy? <laughs> I mean, tried to I'm go, not kidding. And I felt like my dad must have felt when I was a kid and he can't program a VCR. <laughs> I'm serious. Because the layout is completely different. It's like there's fortresses and forts everywhere. And like there's you can't find the checkout. You're like, I'm right. so lost you can't right find now. Anything you're looking for when you walk into the store. Mm -hmm. That's to, crazy. Yeah. To, to, to yeah. start with. Don't you like the app bars where you get to play with all the tablets? No. no. I, I was... We didn't even make it that far. We <laughs> no. were like, no. And then we left. Like well, I tried, my, uh, I tried like to, to buy some work in there who knows less than you do trying to tell exactly. you about how it's a great <laughs> item. That's yeah. true. I mean, there was you walk uh, in. one of my coworkers was there last week. He had to pick up a TV for something we were working on because the people we ordered it from were taking too long. And uh, and he's like, he was talking about how weird it was to be in there. And he's like, so I'm waiting for the guy to pull the TV out. And I walk over where the laptops are, and this guy, he's like, he's getting really up close to the laptops, like he's practically smelling them, and he's trying <laughs> to like read all the little details that they have printed on the decals. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, because you're sometimes you feel awful for the people who are at the whim and will of Best Buy. <laughs> so he walks up to him. He's like, "Hey, man, what do you, you, you got questions or what are you, what are you trying to buy here?" And he's like, "Well, I need to." I'm buying uh, buying my son a laptop for college, and I uh, and I don't. And he leaned in real close. He's like, "Get him a MacBook." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "You know, I was looking at that, but I just wanted to come and, and take a look." And then he like my coworker spent like five minutes with him, explaining to him the benefits and the pros and cons. And he's like, "I, I think you're right. I'm just going to go to the Apple Store." <laughs> <laughs> the last time I walked into a Best Buy was four years ago. Four. I walked in, told the guy at the Geek Squad <laughs> what piece of memory I needed. Chuck? Yeah, okay. Chuck. <laughs> no, that's no. the nerd herd. Yeah, Chuck mm. works for the nerd herd. Oh. Nerd herd. But I, I walked up to the guy. I told him exactly what piece of memory I, I needed. It was on the wall. I pointed to it. I handed him the paper. And he still brought me back the wrong one. <laughs> Plus, there's that time we got kind of uh, 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 blindsided by the Best Buy presentation at that one uh, uh, yeah. social media event. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. That, that was a good feeling. <laughs> so, yeah, screw them. Yeah. It's been four years since I've walked in one. It'll be another four years before I even think about walking in It really in one. is. Like like you were saying, Rob, it really is that place that, that you're stuck with when you need something quicker than my Amazon Prime can get me something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you that's know? exactly but it. Like, know... I need, you know, a 46 inch Samsung, like, top of the line TV. 
there's really nowhere else I can go. I and really we just, paid out the nose for it. I was it. really just thinking ink or a hard drive, but you had it's a bigger budget than I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you, you consider, so like talk about markups at Best Buy. So uh, a 55 inch LCD uh, Samsung, like top of the line order from Abe's of Maine or B and H or something like that and delivered to my door with like three day shipping will cost you nineteen hundred dollars. Jeez. A forty six inch display purchased from Best Buy cost me eighteen hundred and fifty dollars. Mm. Do the math. Mm. <laughs> Nobody shipped it. Nobody had to box it. I mean we got this free this free Blu ray player with it, which is like going right in the trash but <laughs> <laughs> it's like the crazy bread they give you at little caesars it's just like what am i gonna do with this <laughs> yeah, what, exactly. what's what's going on with this you know physical media what's that yeah, yeah right yeah that's <laughs> unfortunate uh but there's no one else to go you know i got staples when i really need ink you know i used I, to love to go it. to best buy when i was in college i know it was the place i mean mm-hmm. i mean i'll go like i'll play with the connect but you feel weird playing just dance in the middle of a best buy store it was like the um, cheapest place to get uh cds yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it was it, it, but they, they don't even have, have any really great anymore. um you get like dvds there you couldn't find anywhere else mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but that's all cut down now like if people if people di- who didn't need things in a pinch and people who uh, were just so completely like did not like terrified of buying things on the Internet or just unaware of the fact that the Internet exists entirely. <laughs> if this small <laughs> section of people didn't did not exist, Best no Buy would rations. go out of business tomorrow. There you go. Best no Buy is kind of like IE. You, you need IE once to download Chrome or Firefox or whatever. <laughs> I just did it on yes, that computer yeah. right there. Yes. <laughs> And then you know better, and yeah, you never go back. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I, I I can't tell you how how right everybody is. I actually used to work for Best Buy, and holy crap, <laughs> <laughs> this is not a good place to work for. You know what they wanted me to push more than anything else? Hmm. Monster magazines. Cables? Magazines. That's right. They always they always want to get you an Entertainment oh, Weekly. Right. Why do I want Entertainment yeah. Weekly? I have the internet. <laughs> You're spending, um, what, $12,000 on a TV and a, and a surround sound and a, all the setup and everything like that and all these uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. I bet you would like some GQ. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I, last time I was in there, uh, they had somebody, uh, at, he, he walked right up to the, uh, the Nook and the uh, Kindle Fire, which I was just playing with, and uh, was like, Wh- which one should I get? And the guy says, well, they're both pretty much the same. Oh, oh, I had to walk oh out. no. I had a meeting in about 10 minutes across the street, so I'm like, I'm going to walk out now before I'm stuck here, because this is not going to end well. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, then there's another one to make us feel good about ourselves, because everybody here is just about is holding an Apple device. Uh, Samsung had some tremendous commercials. Um, <laughs> oh, I was so angry. <laughs> oh, this was so <laughs> dumb. And, and the thing is, is their thing isn't even out yet. <laughs> you have to get it unlocked on uh like from another country and 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 everything well no now, like the right? device that they're pushing isn't even out yeah. and available yet so they're like no waiting for us psych although <laughs> i gotta give them this is the first one they didn't push a dual core processor every time like a a, a tablet or a phone commercial talks about like a dual core processor in the memory and all the cool how many apps you can run i turned to my wife and said did you get any of that do you want that phone and she's like, I have no idea what they're talking about. Um, well, this is but even, this they, one okay. comes with the they pushed the thing. stylus. Yeah, this one yeah. at least. This one at least they're pushing the phone and have some really stupid song playing. Um, and but they push a style. My Palm Pilot had a stylus. That's what Rachel said. <laughs> she's like, like, didn't we do that already? <laughs> Come on. Exactly right. Um, and, and the darkness I and it's huge. It's I own one huge. product that needs a stylus. That's a Nintendo DS. I don't need any. <laughs> there you go. But like, yeah. like you see everybody holding it, so you have an idea how big this thing is. Yeah, and it's comically gigantic. And Missy turned to me and says, "I would not want something that big." It's comically. Gi- oh, let's let's run down the line here. It's comically gigantic. You can't buy it. They're using a band that was popular three years ago. <laughs> More than what that. else? Should you just stop it. You can't buy it. <laughs> You can't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> it has and it has a stylus, which apparently you can draw Listen, on anything with this thing. I have it, a finger. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Nature's there you go. stylus, right here. <laughs> and I love that they keep going. That there's there's been several. I think it's all Samsung commercials where they're putting any given Android product, 
And when they want to compare it to us losers standing in line for Apple products, because all of us are losers who stand in line for Apple products. That's yeah. always the metaphor. They're like, oh, let's walk up to these people standing in line and show them this thing, which is hilarious. You can't buy it. It uses a stylus. <laughs> and they're all going to be like, oh, I see which the is, light now. Which this is, is the, amazing. Yeah, which is exactly the antithesis to everything that they're standing in line for, you know? It's uh, uh, that's that's. I was more likely to run out and buy a case of Bud Light <laughs> from, yeah, yeah. From, from the dog commercial <laughs> than I was to run out and buy the Samsung phone with a stylus. I <laughs> genuinely want to try Bud Platinum. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Do not genuinely want to try that tablet phone thing. Right, oh, Bud man. Platinum. <laughs> yeah, that, that it's a blue like. bottle though. If any commercial during the Super Bowl wanted me to go out and buy their product, it would have to be the Bud Light commercial with the dog mm. or the M&M commercials. Yeah. Yeah, based on, oh my God, based the M&M on commercials. The Fiat commercial or whatever? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> uh, uh, what, with the lady? Yeah. 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 Josh and I both stopped and we were like, what's happening here? I don't even understand. I'm pretty sure that guy's undressing a car with his eyes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, so many car commercials. Oh, yeah. Was <laughs> drowning the, in car commercials. So many cars I did not want to buy. Yeah. Well, there I was mean, there was the I Chevy mean, commercial that completely ignored the fact that if, if the end of the world happens, <laughs> the last thing you want to be driving is something that gets 7 MPG. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he couldn't have driven to the group of other Chevy drivers. But they the all would have run was, out of gas. And then also the question was, where were, where were the women at to repopulate? Then somebody mentioned there was a dog. There was oh a dog boy. and Twinkies. So that's and Twinkies. Oh, Twinkies. And Twinkies. Twinkies were a nice touch. I gotta give you that. But but the, nothing was pushing. Like I hear so many on my tech, so many things about on, on my pet, uh, the, the on my tech podcast about like the Ford Sync and all the old cool stuff you can do with that. Why aren't those being pushed on a commercial? You yeah. know, I mean yeah. the, the the fact that everybody has an iPhone or they're standing in line for one and just got this super giant comical <laughs> phone that's not out yet. Uh, but but everybody's gotten those. Why not push these extra features? Because I may not care, you know, you know, we go look for a car. I'm the one that says, hey, does it have a CD player back when that was a cool thing? You know, whereas my wife is like actually driving around and looking under the hood and stuff. You know, <laughs> So so where is the car commercial for me, man? I don't give a crap about Clint Eastwood telling me about how America is awesome. Although I completely wanted to punch a foreigner at that point. Um, <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Go America, right? Uh, but, but where's, you know, where's... where's Team America! <laughs> wow. Hey, yeah. maybe, maybe the next we're, Samsung phone you can drive. It'll be big, big enough. enough. Yeah, it's getting big, big enough. enough. Yeah. I, can, I, can, I, can at least, I can at least go surfing. That was a good segue. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. oh, boy. Zing. <laughs> wow. Wow. But there you go. Car, commercial, car commercials missing the boat on the biggest... Uh, other than the biggest game of the year, man. So hey, wait, there was a football game in between those commercials, though. Uh, no one cares. Red people yeah. beat no. the blue people. Yeah, they did. Did you see the Coca Cola Bears? What's that? The Coca Cola Bears. <laughs> so many Coca Cola Bears. No, 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 no. They had live Coca Cola Bears you could watch on Facebook that reacted <laughs> to the game as what? the game <laughs> unfolded. And, and it, they I would it was chuckle. unaware. Yeah, they chuckle at it was commercials. was amazing. Yeah, they and... would laugh at commercials and they would jab each other and they would react as the play unfolded. I didn't. And they were opposite it. teams, so yeah. one would go oh, while the other one went yes. Was, was that was that like shared on the commercial or anything? I don't know. I saw a Twitter link about it, and I was like, "What? No!" And I watched it. And I, there's I, a little bit of a delay, but it was yeah. pretty. It was really. It's like I watched like three polar bear commercials, and I didn't see any reference to this at all. Where there's it was like Facebook.com slash like Coke app or something like that. It's weird. There's like this interesting segregation they're doing where all the car commercials are not for the tech crowd. And there's cool tech stuff happening, and they're not going to tell anybody watching TV about it. <laughs> Whoops! Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But then there's the new. There was at one point Burger King had this uh, this website that you went to with a guy in a chicken suit, and yeah, he I remember that. Type <laughs> he would do. <laughs> That's right. That was horrible. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Super um, weird. Wasted so much time on that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, right, there right, was... Samuel Jackson could leave you a voicemail. Remember that? Yeah. For snakes on snakes a plane. Snakes on a plane. We did that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Um. There. But then there was the live stream, which we checked out a little bit. It was a full three minutes behind the game. Oh. You could pick a camera. That was kind of cool. 
And there were no ads, right? And there was like, somebody said that uh, there wasn't on the one we were looking at, but somebody, uh, somebody was talking about today. And I was looking at it over my brother's shoulder, of course. And, um, and and they said that like it would pop up some at the bottom and you had to click and it would show you like three ads or something like that. But after a while, it just didn't even do that. So, I mean, where, why, that seemed like a missed opportunity, you know, or rights. I mean, I'm seeing about like Super Bowl ads are getting pulled from YouTube. They're ads. Yeah. They're, yeah, please they're, they're steal ads. them. Ads. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, don't get our message Take out there them. or anything, right? Wow. So... Well, you know what? Part of that, actually, one interesting thing about that is they probably pay for the music and oh, various things. the darkness and, song. And that might, be darkness one, song. that might be one reason why they pull it. <laughs> but go. it is stupid. It's like, we, you know, they're but trying otherwise. to pimp their goods. And... Otherwise, I can't remember what the ad was. I, oh, it was the, um, the Clint Easter one. Well, it got pulled. Really? Off of YouTube. Yeah. Which, I don't know, that could be some music rights or Clint Eastwood. Well, I, I know there's, there's... Clint Eastwood doesn't know about the internet yet. <laughs> he invented the internet. He's going to beat it up. <laughs> yeah, out of wood. Get off my lawn. <laughs> um, well, there is there is also political controversy right now around that ad as well. So they might have... Oh, they'd say that I, I, the one comment I saw is, uh, uh, this is Chevy's thank you to Obama. Yes. So is that... that pretty much sum it up yeah but then mm. but then clean eastwood was like i don't even like obama <laughs> so he was like this is just for america get off my lawn <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who's the president um yeah yeah well on that note we gotta get out of here so we can talk about got some angry and went back to whittling <laughs> to whittling yeah he was whittling really? the, He's a whittler you yeah, he was whittling the new internet internet oh. 2.0 <laughs> out of the logs <laughs> If anybody's a whittler, it's uh, it's Clint Eastwood. Oh yeah, yeah. with a spatoon, knives, or something. and a dog. <laughs> wow! All right. On that note, guys, I imagine that Ron Holy Swanson hell. is uh, Clint Eastwood's son, like long lost son. Yeah. You know that Ron Swanson is a legitimate woodworker. Right? Yeah, he, he has DVDs. <laughs> yeah, he he yeah. hand builds strip canoes. That's insane. Of course he does. <laughs> I think that's on the manliness poster, isn't it? It should be. <laughs> Build your own canoe. Yeah. Crew wow. cuts only. And finally, from the chat room, I want to throw out to you guys Monster Ham Lincoln. <laughs> ah! Yes. Approved. Awesome, awesome Cast 88, get off my lawn. Um, <laughs> on that note. So, uh, you guys are at monsterhaiku.org. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, that is on sale until. I'm selling books. March, March 3rd. My March, March 3rd. There's yes. a nice countdown over there. And also, uh, what else you guys got over there that you guys want to plug other than the Monster Haiku? Um, there's an amazing video game thing going down that people should go and check out. Oh, you mean... Chachi Plays? Oh, my Chachi If, if, if someone wants to buy me an uh, original watercolor, that would be awesome. <laughs> 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 so, uh, we'll look, whoa, I see you, Chachi Plays. Yeah, it's Friday, it's 7 Friday. p.m. Friday, this Friday. I'll be down at the Tunes and we will be broadcasting it live here at live.sorgatronmedia.com. All 24 hours. All 24 hours. So at 3 o'clock in the morning when you wake up to get a snack or whatever it is. Check in on us. I'll be watching the chat room. Yeah, we'll be there. There Actually, if I remember correctly, at 3 o'clock in the morning, you'll get to see my shining face playing against uh, Chachi himself. As I destroy you in a game of my choosing. choosing. That's true. That's very true. We'll, we'll talk more about that on the Mayhem Show. Yeah. Oh, are we going to trash talk on the uh, Mayhem Show here? Mm-hmm. Yes, this is the happy show that we can't curse. Oh, right. yes. Actually, you're at 1 a.m. <laughs> 1 a.m.? Oh, yes. 1 a.m. One, okay. Well, he's yes. he's actually there twice. Someone donated money for a slot. Yeah. And so, uh, requested that I beat him at any game. <laughs> <laughs> so I had him pick That's another true. slot. He's actually in the Tetris tournament. Yeah, the, which is, I picked. I picked the slot right after the Tetris tournament. So. I'm I'm pretty sure that Rachel could beat everybody here in Tetris. Oh, oh. hands down. Oh, wow. Hands yeah, down. that's it's that reason alone that I had to limit it at eight people <laughs> because so every Rachel, single so Rachel wouldn't get in. No, so yes. yeah, that's no, right. No, no. <laughs> Understood. No, no, every, every single person thinks that they are the greatest person to ever touch a controller to play Tetris. Is that Tetris. one guy with Mario? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so I mean. I I had to close and it. And by the way, I gotta say, if you're playing Tetris this year, these trophies are amazing. Oh yeah, oh, I love they them. are they are handcrafted uh, <laughs> trophies. They took me <laughs> three hours to make. They're amazing excellent. from real trophies and real amazing. 3D Tetris pieces. Oh, that's so, excellent. I'll try to find the video from last year here. Um, there's actually a uh, 
and I don't remember what it's called, but there's actually a board game. Or kind of like a board game, I don't know. It's a physical game that was kind of like Tetris, where you had to hurry up and place a piece and hit the button before the timer ran out. And the next person would do the same thing. And it was kind of like reverse Jenga. Like, you you would build the tower instead of trying to uh, remove pieces from the tower. San and, Francisco? <laughs> and the, uh, the, the, uh, the base broke. So I have all these, like, Tetris pieces. And all these pieces, might as well get rid of them. Right. And there's a little clip from last, last year, what we did for Chachi Plays for Kids 1. A little bit of Mario Kart happened in there. So uh, go check that out, ChachiPlays.com, and donate. We hit our goal, but... Give uh, more. Yeah. Can you Might as well. I mean, we're, this is what we're doing, so we can get more donations. Yeah, you can so. give more. So, I so, won't so, complain. No, no. <laughs> so join us this weekend, and uh, and there you go. Um, your sites for, uh, for, for the business you do. Uh, SecondBlockStudio.com. <laughs> For that there thing you that you do <laughs> on the I internet. I was trying to pick up where I left off before they threw it to you. Uh, and anything else going on with you guys? No, just Monster Haiku. We're really excited about it. Our, when can uh, I expect my book? Um, we ship everything March 19th. Okay. Everything? And that's cards, yep. uh, posters, everything. Every, yeah. Everything gets Excellent. shipped. It's, yep. wor- it's worth All waiting for. Promise. Oh, I'm sure. I'm just impatient. Yeah, and your, your name will be on the inside. Awesome. Are yeah. you going to really? autograph every copy? Yes. <laughs> Josh says. Okay. Yes. <laughs> just making sure, because I mean, I know where you guys are, so if I want it signed, I can just track you down. But it's true. And I figured you guys could just make it easier on me and just sign it before you put it in the envelope and send it to me. Right. We could. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And write me a note inside somewhere. I'll, I'll draw you a Tetris piece on it. How's that? There you go. <laughs> that works. Will Rutherford. Yes, sir. What's going on with you other than monsterhaiku.org? Benjamin. That there's nothing bigger than monsterhaiku.org. <laughs> <laughs> thoughtful, thoughtful Riot. Thoughtful, my other site, Thoughtful Riot, is kind of on, on a holding pattern right now because um, I'm trying to focus on uh, monsterhaiku.org. And I would like to throw out uh, wrestlingmayhemshow.com, uh, which is coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, Chachi, we've already talked to Chachi. Yes, uh, talked Rob, to what's going on with you? Your hair has gotten more amazing throughout the show. <laughs> as it, I'm not even paying attention to what's going on. As, no, you as this show goes on, you turn more and more into a lumberjack. Uh, it's true. I've been whittling a canoe in the corner. <laughs> um, I... Uh, yeah, I, the chick who cuts my hair is a little too far away for me to feel like riding my bike there, and I had to give up my car again because it's still broken as it has been for the last six months or so um but uh let's see what uh cottonfactory.com i could do that robjdlc.com uh oh hey station street hot dogs if you're in pittsburgh and you like hot dogs you need to check this place out it's kind of a big deal excellent station street pgh.com for more info excellent and you can check everything else going on of course, at SorgatronMedia.com. There's plenty of things, of course, with Chachi Plays going on this weekend. You can check all that out there. All the other, uh, if you're into wrestling, we're selling DVDs now. That's a thing. Yay. And, uh, <laughs> also, of course, also cast Unsung, uh, the Chatterbox, all kinds of stuff going on there. Uh, I have been, hey, I blogged last week. Woo. Sorgatron.com, MikeSorg.com with anything else that I am into. And of course, you can contact here at us at the awesome cast at awesomecast.com. Oh, God, you just <laughs> found those. Wait, wait, hold that for, hold that thought for a second. Um, <laughs> awesomecast.com. You can follow us on Twitter at awesomecast. Give us any comments for the show or anything you want to see uh, on the show. I'm sorry, Strachi is so distracting right now because I realized what he found. Um, also, hey, we're on Facebook. We're on Google+. Plus. Wow. So go follow us, like us, plus us there. You can email us at contact at awesomecast.com with any stories or anything like that. 724-25-A-CAST 724-252-2278 Hey, Sock Screwdriver I forgot what show this was. Um, he, uh, he sent in a great video from Neil Gaiman about copyrights. I'm going to link that on uh, all that stuff, all the social media stuff, since we didn't get a chance to talk about it here on the show. It's a great video about his realization of copyrights and how he's been dealing with that. Um, oh, I thought you were going to put it on, Chachi. <laughs> no, I'm not putting it oh, on. Oh, man. Uh, so uh, for Chachi and Rob and, and everybody, thank you, the Monster IQ team, for joining us this week. Uh, you all have been awesome here in the studio. You have been awesome in our chat room all night long. You're our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Awesome, yeah.